Arm Arang. From this parched earth, the nation of Nabath Arang once rose. When I journeyed here, long ago, I spoke with a sun-weathered elder. He told me Armoreng meant majestic land in the language of his people. And so it might still be, were it not for the light's unrelenting onslaught. Master Gengen, this is the friend of the Exarch I was telling you about. Very good, very good. Though friend or no, all are welcome in Mordsk. Souk is Mordish for city. As things stand, this souk boasts the largest and busiest marketplace in all Armoreg. You'll find ore from the mines here, of course, but all manner of other things too, many of them rare. As I told you before, not many visit Armoreng by choice, but Maud Souk's a different story. Merchants come from miles around to purchase the relics the Maud dig up. Aye, that they do, for Maud do not dismiss the spoils of the ants. We clean them and polish them and reveal to the world their true value. That is why they come here, come from far away, come with much money. And so our souk is always busy, busy, busy. No such thing as a thing no one needs. You say that every time, Master Gengen. Uh, some sort of family motto, wasn't it? Or perhaps a Maud philosophy, for which we should all be very grateful. Would that everyone was so willing to take in refugees, regardless of race or creed. Now then. If you intend to spend any time here, you'll want to gain the trust of the locals. And there's a little custom all newcomers are expected to observe. The cracking of the coin purse. You buy one thing from the market. Price can be low or high, just as long as you buy. As the good Maud says. In fact, the Exarch sent a little something to cover this very expense. A Verbert gold piece, no less. The first I've held in years. Verbert gold? Real Verbert gold? Here, newcomer, crack your coin purse with me. Oh no, you want my goods, newcomer? I have jars and pots all smooth and shiny. Over here! Come and knock! Why, why? Enough of that! Calm, I say! This one must still journey through the barrens. Nothing bulky, nothing heavy, no pots! Nothing better for the road than a full belly. Spend that piece at Ron Ron's place, yes? Eat the three before you leave.
Just a lesser sin eater. Nothing to write home about. I knew you'd turn up sooner or later, but I had been hoping for sooner. How are you? We've fought them to a standstill then. Exarch did say that the Empire seemed to have drawn back when he last looked in on the source. But without knowing for sure how fast time was passing there, I couldn't help worrying that a lot might have happened since then. I'm heartily relieved to hear that it hasn't, just as Alphano must have been. As you can imagine, both he and Arianger were desperate to hear the news from home when I arrived. I haven't actually seen Thancred and Yishtola yet, but they will have heard all the latest developments from the Exarch by now, or should have at least. When I think of how frantic Tataru and the others must be, I want nothing more than to rush back and reassure them. But we still haven't found a way to reverse the summoning. And even if we had, we couldn't just ignore Urielje's vision. He may use ten words where one would suffice, and they may often obscure as much as they reveal. But on this matter, he was as clear as day. I do not doubt for one moment that he saw what he claims nor how difficult it must have been to speak about them. The Eighth Umbral Calamity and your death aren't exactly topics for idle conversation. As much as I might want to go home, I don't want to go home to that. We can't allow the rejoining to happen, which means we have to save the first from the Sin Eaters. That great wall of white is a remnant of the Flood. A hundred years ago, the balance in the first tipped decisively in favor of light. From that moment, it rose and swelled with each passing day, and then, without warning, it burst forth like water from a broken dam. A colossal wave of pure light, drowning everything in its wake. Only Norvrant was spared. For the most part, Living things are composed of ether of various different aspects. But when exposed to such a flood, their etheric harmony is shattered and their natural form breaks down. Then they either perish or are warped into mindless abominations. Yes, that's how the Sin Eaters came to be. They were once living creatures, or people, that were caught in the path of the Flood. Once the change is wrought, there is no going back. In that instant, they are gripped by an insatiable appetite for ether, and will happily gorge themselves on any living thing within reach. But even that is not the worst of it. The stronger Sin Eaters can plant light in us, like seeds in soil, corrupting our ether and triggering the birth of new monstrosities. They are creatures of base instinct that exist only to feed and to multiply. They feel no pity, know no remorse and are utterly deaf to reason, which is why they must be destroyed, every last one of them. The infirmary is full of the Sin Eaters' victims, left here to spend their final hours waiting for the change to overtake them. Look. Over there, 
where the wall is broken. Do you see what lies beyond? That's what the land became after the light flooded in, an empty white nothingness. Life cannot exist in such conditions. The primordial light would wreak havoc on the body's etheric balance. That nectarine you bought, it's Halric's favorite fruit. Most of the patients, Halric included, survived the attacks of powerful eaters. But their fate was sealed all the same. The monster's corruption has entered their bodies, and their very essence is being subsumed by light. The twisted state of the world itself just makes matters worse. Under normal circumstances, a person's ether naturally tends to equilibrium. But for these poor souls, the opposite is true. Sooner or later, every single one of them will turn. Teslin and the patients, they all know this. They know what has to be done before the change goes too far, before the eater within takes over. The preferred method is mixing poison into their favorite food. In my time here, I've borne witness to a lot of last meals. I feel just as helpless as before. No matter how hard I fight, it's never enough. But it's a war I mean to wage, nonetheless. Speaking of wars, do you remember how I made you promise not to leave me and then promptly collapsed? Well, let's just say I had a few choice words for the Exarch concerning the timing of his summons. But even if the fault lay with someone else, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd abandon you on the battlefield. So I swore that I'd make up for my absence there by making a difference here. And that's what keeps me moving forward, even when things seem hopeless. On which note, it's time we headed back. The longer we keep Tesslin waiting, the harder this will be for her. Speak up if you'd like another helping. I made a little bit more than usual today. And you've added something special to the broth, if I'm not mistaken. Aye, well, it's not often we have visitors from the Crystarium, so I may have thrown in a few extra bits and bobs. so rarely have guests. In a place like this, you learn to take what moments of happiness you can get. I remember when I first came here with my mother. She was showing the early signs. I knew there was no way to save her, but I just couldn't face what needed to be done. That's the way of it for most people, why they travel for moms to stay here. Beaten, broken souls come to wait out the inevitable, 
to receive the mercy of a painless death. When my mother finally left this world, I was mad with grief, but also thankful that her passing was a peaceful one. It's never easy ending a life you've cared for, even when you believe they go on to a better place. I often find myself wishing the warrior of darkness would come and do that part for me. The warrior of darkness? You've never heard the tale. I'm not sure where it began, but every child in Norvrand could tell you a version of it. Warrior of darkness, servant of death, take care of our souls at our dying breath. Let sinners and eaters of sin go with thee, that all may return to the sunless sea. Well, that's the version I was taught anyway. It's just an old bedtime story. He certainly never deigned to visit us here. Which is a good thing, surely. He sounds rather ominous. Do you think so? I always liked the idea that he treated every soul the same, even the Sin Eaters. They're coming. Jesleen! Have you seen Halric? I swear, I only took my eyes off him for a moment. Any sign of him? No luck then, but he surely can't have gone far. We should keep looking. The Sin Eaters are out in force, and if we don't find him soon, you can be sure they will. Did you see the size of that thing? It must be one of the nasty ones. Wherever it's going, it can only mean trouble. After it! deserve happiness, wherever we can find it. The time left to you is precious. No one should die in pain. Mother, mother, I...
And so you return. Have you gained a better understanding of the crisis now faced by the first? Better is not the word I would use. Some lands may have been spared the flood, but the survivors live only to suffer. There seems no end to the horrors inflicted by the Sin Eaters. Indeed. Those abominations are a calamity in their own right. And I can well imagine how hopeless the task of eradicating them must seem to you. But after countless battles and untold sacrifice, we have identified a potential weakness. Sin Eaters are drawn to serve the strongest of their kind, a class of creature we call Light Wardens. And from what we have been able to ascertain, only a handful of these entities exist. Just as an ant colony will perish in the absence of its queen, we believe that the death of a Light Warden will cause the lesser creatures within its sphere of influence to disperse. I have a feeling Yulmul might have something to say about any concerted action we take against these monsters. Vorthra's command over the Sin Eaters is integral to Yulmoran society. In seeming to guarantee his people's safety, it guarantees their obedience. He will not take kindly to us depriving him of such useful allies. Agreed. Thus we will need to occupy or otherwise divert his forces whilst we proceed with the business of eliminating the Wardens. Until we have done so, all other considerations must be set aside if we are to forestall the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Your uncertainty is understandable, given the circumstances. Perhaps a more detailed explanation is in order. To begin at the beginning, then. In the ancient past, a single star was divided into 14 worlds. This is the source, your home. These others are the 13 shards, in whose number we find the first. Though physically separate, they retain a connection to each other, and with the source especially. Now, let us assume that a given element in one of the shards attains abnormal ascendancy. Just as water will flow from the highest point to the lowest, the excess energy will begin trickling into the source. And such an influx of ether will of course exert a palpable influence. If the element in question were fire, then drought and wildfires might ensue. If it were ice, one might expect the weather to turn bitterly cold. As ether continues to pour in, such phenomena will become more and more extreme, until eventually, a single, untimely event triggers a disaster which cracks the barrier dividing the two worlds. What was once a trickle now becomes a deluge, sweeping the shard along to be rejoined with the source. At the same time, the element which held sway in the shard is unleashed in full, its energies amplifying the original disaster to truly catastrophic proportions. An earthquake thus magnified might strike with enough force to shatter continents, a tidal wave might swell to a size capable of drowning entire nations. These devastating events are what we refer to as umbral calamities. Seven times has a calamity befallen the source. Seven times has a shard been absorbed.
At present, the light-drowned realm of the first stands perilously close to meeting the conditions for a rejoining. It is the Sin Eaters who are to blame for the light's continued dominance. In addition to attracting their lesser kin, the Light Wardens I mentioned earlier radiate ether, saturating every corner of their territory with light. Even here in the flood-spared region of Norvrat, their influence is strong enough to banish night from the sky. Thus, if we are to restore balance to the first and head off a potential calamity, it is imperative that we put each and every Light Warden to the sword. We've been doing our best to take the fight to the enemy ever since we first heard the Exarch's explanation. Though we have yet to claim any meaningful victories if truth be told. Apart from being confoundingly elusive, the Light Wardens possess a troublesome quality which compelled us to delay our plans until such time as you arrived. Forgive the interruption, my lord, but Holminster Switch is requesting reinforcements. They say the Sin Eaters are attacking in force, and the village could soon be overrun. Alert the guard. We should be prepared in case the fighting reaches the Crystarium. You have command of our forces in the field, Captain, but hold off on entering the town until I arrive. That goes for Alphano and Alize as well. My lord. Pray, lend us your strength. Such a fight will provide you with far greater insight than any explanation I could offer. Us. Quickly, my lord, we must withdraw. That will not be necessary, Captain. Though I appreciate your concern, the eternal light of these creatures has confounded us for nigh on a hundred years. For each we have put down, another has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. But now we have a way to contain that corruption. blessing of light, and the hero who wields it now stands before you. monster's power is broken, and the world, twisted by its touch, returns to its rightful form.
me. It's so beautiful. The sun, the sea. The warrior of darkness has come. Is that what I think it is? The night sky, as it should be. Who are you people? You killed a warden, then bathed in its ether as if it were a spring shower and now the sky? The legends are true. My lord? How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one possessed of her blessing? For you? You have vanquished the Light Warden of Lakeland, and for the first time in a century, darkness has returned to the mantle of night. Without the ever-present light to sustain them, the Sin Eaters will have no choice but to retreat. Yet our victory is far from complete. Though darkness has fallen here, the other Wardens yet bask beneath burning skies, feasting upon what little life remains. Even should it cost me all I have, I would see each and every one of them slain that this world might be spared from oblivion. Not only for the first, but for the source as well. Save one, and we save the other. But, be that as it may, I concede it was wrong of me to summon you to this fight against your will. I swear on my life, I will one day atone for that deed. But for the present, I beg you, stay and see this fight to its conclusion. Cast down the Wardens and restore darkness to the first. On behalf of the first, I offer you my deepest thanks. I understand there is much at stake here, Exar, but why do you risk yourself so readily? It must have been a dangerous drain on your ether to summon even one person across the rift. I do it for my people, of course. To give the Crystarium the tomorrow it deserves. That is true now, yes, but the city had yet to be built when you first called forth the Crystal Tower. I'm simply curious to know what prompted you to commit yourself so completely to this particular course. There are... things which we can ill afford to lose. And... I sensed from the first that I had a part to play in preserving them. <laughs> Forgive me. I fear the events of the day may have taken their toll. Despite appearances, I am an old man. One burdened with many difficult memories, some too painful to recall. Well then, I'm sorry for pressing you. It's a family failing, I'm afraid. <laughs> One which has served us well more often than not. Needless to say, we will continue to fight at your side until the last Sin Eater is defeated. Come then, my warriors of darkness. Let us gather the surviving villages and make our way back to the Crystarium. <laughs>